good to be back. It's good to be here to share with you, to bless you with the word of God. I'm, I'm excited about uh, teaching God, the word of God. I, I, I got up this morning and I thank God that I uh, had another opportunity to get on the prayer line as a presenter of the word of God. And I was excited about getting here to share with you, which, we, which is our continuation of life wide open. And we're grateful to God for allowing us to wow. come. And we want to continue to bless the Lord with our online thing. And we, we certainly, certainly invite you to get on board with the Lost Street Missionary Baptist Church online ministry. Uh, we, are, we are very proud with it. We invest in it. Uh, and we, we are praying to God that God would give us more so we can invest more into this ministry. It's so important. Uh, to uh, ministry. And matter of fact, this is where we at today. Dr. Jeremiah talks about life wide open, wide open all the way. And he tells the story of uh, uh, Vernon McGee, McCree, McGee, McGee, Vernon McGee, how because of technology, one of the greatest teachers, author, writer, preacher, uh, he was able, when he went away, his legacy stayed with us because of technology, because of online ministry. And uh, this, this was fascinating as he told us, tells of him as the, one of the uh, great uh, preachers that we still have his sermon written in different languages. And, 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 and uh, that's, that was the most fascinating thing to me uh, is to hear that <clears throat> that his message come over the internet in more than 100 languages. And that means people are getting to hear the word of God. Sunday we preach about watching, be ready. And remember in your script, in the scripture, Jesus says that when the gospel reached the four corners of the world, be ready for the end is here. And because of technology, because of AI and uh, the many other internet uh, uh, phones that we have, the gospel is able <clears throat> to reach out to all, to all, all, all of us, all over the world. And, and it's fascinating that it can come in your own language. Let me tell you about the first one. <laughs> when when, when, when uh, uh, Peter was preaching the gospel, you remember the 4,000 that got saved? It's 4,000. But the Holy Ghost fell upon him. And you remember what each one of those people who were Jews from all over the world spoke different languages. And I thank you for this Holy Ghost. They spoke different languages. And guess what they said? I heard the gospel in my own language. So the, 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 the internet speaking in different languages, it's not new. Because it is, it is a thing of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Yeah. And today's lesson is about one fascinating character in the Bible that simply that we forget about sometime until we start to read his short story. And we know about Joshua. Uh, somewhere in the Bible, he calls the, min the minister of Moses, him that minister to Moses. Joshua, who became a great leader. To the, to, to the people of Israel as he's the one who crossed him over because God told Moses, I'm not going to let you do it, but I'm going to let your minister Joshua do it to bring the people over into the promised land. Amen? Uh, 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 listen to this. The le this lesson is about Caleb. Uh, uh, Caleb, the, the lesson celebrates the friend of Joshua. He was 85 years old when he achieved his peak accomplishment, a man living with wide open faith until the end. And, 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 and if you read uh, in Joshua chapter 14, verses 10 and 11, we will find that we see this. And now behold, the Lord had kept me alive. As he said, those 45 years, Every, even since the Lord spake these words unto Moses, while the children of Israel wander in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day 
four score and five years old, 40, 85 years old. And as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so my strength now, watch this, for war, both to go out and to come in. That's something that every time I read that scripture, boy, it inspires me uh, uh, at, at my age now. That if the Lord have blessed uh, Caleb that way, he also can bless me. You know, I, I'm, say to, say to yourself, I'm not too old. You know, I, I, I still have an assignment to do. I'm not too old. I still got a life to live. I'm not too, lo too old to live a life wide open all the way for the Lord. Amen. Uh, 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 the first thing we learned about Caleb is certainly that, watch this, he was enthusiastic about life. Amen? One of the conditions, what happened to the people of God is that those that, when God, when Moses sent the spies out into the land, he sent out uh, 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 40 of them, am I correct? And then two, uh, two of them came back. I'm sorry, he sent out 12. Two of them, 10 of them came back and said there are giants in the land. Joshua and Caleb were the other two. Caleb said, wait a minute now, let me tell you, people of God, we can go and conquer this land. Caleb mentions the fact that the land is filled with milk and honey. He said, come on, let us go over and take the land. But that the other, the other says that we cannot take this land because we saw giants in the land. Come on, y'all. Now, wait, wait a minute. Y'all y'all, y'all went to the same place? <laughs> Did y'all see the same thing? Come on. Joshua and Caleb said, no, yes, yes, we saw the same thing, but we saw the, the land of milk and honey. We saw giant grapes, and, and, and we saw giants this. He, and I'm not talking about the giants. The children of Anak, I want y'all to remember that, or, or the giants that were occupying the land before the coming. Isn't that something? God says this. Oh, this is exciting. You can have the land, the promised land, but the first enemy you come upon were giants. I, and and when, Lord, why you didn't take us another way around? No, I'm going to take you to this land where the first enemy you see are giants. And then when they got into the land, remember we preached it the other day, it, they saw uh, Jericho who had high walls. And let me tell you something, people of God, it depends on your eye, the eye of faith, what you see. Uh, uh, Caleb was ec ec ecstatic, enthusiastic about life. And one of the conditions of going into the promised land was faith. The people did not see what Caleb and Joshua saw. So God says, okay, you, you, this whole generation that are there now will not go into the promised land. And even Moses, you could not go. He told Moses, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you on the mountain and show you the promised land. Amen, somebody? And that was a miracle within himself where he can stand on the mountain and see all of the promised land. But he said, you're not going to cross over. Amen? And that, because you belong to that generation. Amen? And, 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 and Dr. 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 Jeremiah said, can you imagine that, that Caleb lived that 45 years or 30-some years in, in there and the promised land was right there? Lord have mercy. It was close enough for you to see it and they could not cross in it because a generation had to die before they cross over. Amen? I want to tell you about, tell you about people of God. Get away from those faithless people. Get away, get away from those negative people. Because if you do, then you will not be able to see what God got for you. Amen? You, you know, what, what is faith? The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But faith gives you an eye that you can see. If you hope for it, you can see it. Amen? God did not, did not permit them. And John, uh, Caleb every day had to bury old friends. Had to continue to check in the obituary every day. There is a friend that we got to go and bury. Joshua, we, it's a friend. Joshua would tell him, oh, so-and-so died. And Caleb would say to Joshua, oh, so-and-so died. Did you hear? 
Yeah, because that generation died out. But yet, a generation of funerals would make the best of us gloomy, but not the Caleb. The fire in the furnace of his soul was still lit. He was still living a life wide open. Amen? He was still living a life wide open. And, and, and after that generation died, amen, because they shied away from the giants. Somebody help me here. Caleb grew old as he waited for the decades, through the decades, checking the obituary every day, seeing the last of his friends die. And someone says that they were discouraged because all of their friends uh, and relatives their age had died. You know, uh, uh, my, my wife, uh, my, uh, my daughter always said, Daddy, those co-workers of yours are dying one by one. But look, I said, you, you're not, I say, honey, look at the ones that's in the church. They still living. Amen. Come on, y'all. <laughs> and, and, and this is a great thing. Now, and, 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 but Joshua never got this courage. He kept on living a life. The second part is of Joshua, he was excited about the future. Amen. He was enthusiastic about life. And secondly, he was excited about the future. Ain't God all right, y'all? Uh, 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 Caleb, uh, 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 there was no question about Caleb's pulse. Forty years early, he did some reconnaissance work for the Lord. And he and Joshua had recommended uh, uh, this. He re they had recommended they seen opportunity where other people saw opposition. I like this. Amen. You got that minister? They saw opportunity where other people saw opposition. And this is what's happening to us in our lives. We miss the opportunity by focusing on the opposition. Oh, this is hot right there. This is hot for the Lost Street Baptist Church because we are focusing on our relationship with God. And while we are doing that, we are focusing on the opportunity that God has given us. Amen. You can look at, you can miss the opportunity by looking at the opposition. Amen. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. He, uh, he based his, the, his recommendation not on the problems, but on the provision and the power of God. Amen. Number one, he, he did not miss the opportunity by looking at the opposition. Number two, he did not, he did not, he did not miss the provision and the power of God by looking at the problem. Somebody needs, I think this ought to bless somebody. If you don't believe someone in this house, it ought to bless someone that's online right now. I hope you can come with God about to free you, man. God is about to free you, woman of God. You don't, you don't gave up. Can I speak to someone who has already retired and said, oh, I, 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 I'm getting bored because I don't have nothing to do. What you, God told me to tell you to look back over your life. It was a time when you had to go to work every day. Come on, y'all. You, you, you were concerned about the bills. You were concerned about the children. You were, you were concerned about the grandchildren. And, and, and all at once, the children are grown. And then moved out. The grandchildren, even the grandchildren are grown. And they done moved out. Amen, somebody? You don't have the job no more. But there is still life and fire inside of you. What ha why? Because God still got some opportunities for you. Joshua says, I'm 85 years old. Somebody help me here. Listen what Joshua blessing. Not only, he said his eyes were still good. All right, come on, y'all. And I can't say my eyes were no different than it is when I was 15 because I've been, I was, I've been wearing glasses since I was 12 years old, I think it was. So I'm still wearing glasses now. I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a little secret. I got bifocals in the bottom of my glasses. Come on, y'all. But still, I can see, and I can see very well. And praise the Lord. Look what Joshua Blessing is, minister. He said, not only am I still in good shape, but I can still go to war. Come on, y'all. War is for young men. Huh? Old men is for wisdom and, 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 and to give wise advice. But Joshua said, I can go and fight for, I can still fight right now because I've been blessed by God. Listen to the boldness of his, of his, this. I don't know if I gave that to Brother King. No, I did not. Listen to the boldness of Caleb. Caleb said this, and I'm reading in a different version. Caleb quiet the people before Moses. That's, that's, number, that's in Numbers chapter 14, chapter 13 and chapter 14. Uh, he quieted the people before Moses. He said, let us go up once and take possession. 
for we were well able to overcome the, the, the enemies. And they spoke to all of the congregation of the children of Israel, says the land we pass through to spy out is exceedingly good. Amen? And if the Lord delights in us, that's a key point right there, he will bring us into the land and give, give to us a land which is flowing with milk and honey. Amen? You walking in a desert, man. Come on. You dying. Come on, y'all. But here God wants you to live right here. So Josh, what inspired Caleb is that God had already blessed him. Amen? Uh, 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 watch, watch this, what made him great. Joshua's Caleb said this, he asked for a worthy challenge because he had the wisdom to know that which, which that with powerful quests come powerful reward. The greater the challenge, the greater the reward. Somebody help me here. The lesser the challenge, the lesser the reward. Somebody says, Dr. Jeremiah says this, if you knock down a giant, you become a giant. If you overcome a strong man, you become the strong man. If you overcome a strong woman, you become the strong woman. So, boy, this, this ought to fire you up right there. Come on, people of God. If you knock down a giant, you become the giant. Hallelujah, somebody. Ain't God all right? Somebody help me here. I feel like preaching up in this place. But listen to this. In Joshua, Joshua, Caleb, and Joshua had seen opportunity where other people saw opposition. He based his recommendation not on the problems, but on the provision and the power of God. Jo Joshua 14 and 12, you know, he, he, he turned around and says, now therefore give us this mouth. Give me this mouth. But look, look, I got to back up. I got to see something. Keep it right there, Brother Joe. I could see Joshua as he walked around all day long in that desert. And he looked over to the promised land, and he saw something that nobody else saw. He saw his mountain. And he's saying to himself, when I get this opportunity, I'm going to say to God, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. Lord, you promised me. Come on, y'all. We, we worried about moving mountains. Huh? Joshua was more concerned with, that's my mountain. Hallelujah. The next time you get ready to ask God to move a mountain in your life, you say this to the Lord, that's my mountain that you gave to me. I would prefer to have the mountain than to move the mountain. Lord, help me somebody. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakim were there and the cities were great and fenced in. If so be, the Lord will be with me. Then I will be able to drive them out as the Lord says. Joshua uh, Caleb said, give me the challenge. Amen? The challenge is for me to get the mountain and to drive out those that are in the mountain. Help me somebody. And look, he took a shot right now. You see, Joshua, can I pin a note right here? You're going to run, run into a fence city. You're going to run into a wall city. <clears throat> You're going to run into a wall city. But to me, give me this mountain. Because God promised me this mountain. Whatever God got for you, baby, I'll tell you right now, don't fret. Don't get discouraged. Don't, don't, don't slack back. Don't fall back. It's yours. God will give it to you. Caleb says, give me this mountain. He wanted the challenge. Let me tell you something. Would you ask God for something? And at the same time, you tell God, whatever opposition that's in that blessing, I can overcome it. You know why you can overcome it? Because if God gave it to you, God will make a way for you to get it. That shout, that shout right there. Come on, y'all. So what do I challenge you? I challenge you to ask God for a challenge. Amen? Challenge you to ask. Pre preacher, why would I, why would I want to ask God for a challenge? Because challenge will put the fire on you. Challenge is going to fire your heart up. It's going to make the, it's going to cause the blood to run in your body. And somebody says, what keeps you from, what causes a heart attack when the blood stops running in certain places? But if you got something firing your blood up, they got something that's firing you up, you will be encouraged to fight on. He asked a word of challenge because he had the wisdom to know that with powerful quests, here's another one comes powerful reward. Amen? Why is it that when we grow old, hmm, why is it that we fear growing old? 
The truth is that as soon as we stop living, we start dying. I don't know if I gave it to you, Brother Cain. It's like Proverbs 16 and 31. The hoary head of a crown of glory, it can be found in the way of righteous. That word hoary means great. Amen? The gray head uh, is a crown of, of glory. And if it be found in the way of righteousness, come on, y'all. It's simply saying that don't worry about getting old. As soon as you stop living, you start dying. You got to keep on living. God is challenging you right now. Amen. When I finished, that, finished studying that lesson, I sat down in my, my son's room and started reading, reading that lesson, and I couldn't stop because it inspired me and it encouraged me. I'm not getting old. I'm getting better. Amen, somebody? And, and, and I'm not getting old. I got a challenge before me, you know? Hallelujah, somebody. And when, and when as a pastor that's getting older, I'm inspired to know I still got work to do in this church. I'm also inspired to know that I got to get, they got to train somebody younger than me to take my place. That's a challenge. That challenge inspires me because I got to be qualified to train somebody else. Y'all didn't catch that. You might have missed that. You got to be qualified to train somebody else. Let me come to a close. The, the third part is energized by his assignment. We find words old and advanced in years. Six times in the Bible, we find the words old and advanced in years. Six times in the Bible. But five of those six times, this phrase always show up in the Bible, old and advanced, to a person that is about to experience something astonishing in their life. Amen. Somebody, can I help you? Can I bless you with it? Watch, watch this. It says this, that, 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 that Abraham and Sarah were old and advanced in age. Something was about to happen to them. Hear me, people of God. Somebody, God, they was about to have a child that they never, had, they never could have before. Old in age, Elizabeth and her husband. Help me, somebody. They were, they were called old and advanced, but something great was about to happen in their life. Ain't God all right, y'all? Old, oh, you're never too young, you're never too old. <clears throat> For something great, each time, five times out of six, that when the Bible talk about somebody old and advanced, something astonishing was about to happen in their life. If the Israelites, now watch this, First of all, I got to get to this point. What can, what can help you energize you for your assignment is the opposition. God told Israel, and, and I think this is right now, if I, if I had to talk to, to, to Prime Minister Natiye, he said he will not stop this war until he eliminate Hamas, the, the, the terrorist group Hamas. Listen to what the Bible says in, in, in Joshua 13 and 13. Nevertheless, the children of Israel did not drive out the Gerbersite, the Mechanites, the Gerberhites, and the Mechanites dwell in the land of Israel until this day. Can I, can, can I back it up? They did not drive them out. And because they did not drive them out, they're still fighting them today. What the Bible says is today. Come on, y'all. It's today. Israel, God, no matter what he does, no matter what he's doing, how he is causing much killing in Gaza, yet and still, they, 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 they are fighting an enemy that has always been in the land because the, his ancestors did not obey God when God says, drive them out. Drive them out. Uh, uh, Caleb said, in order for me to get it, I have to defeat the sons of, of, of Anakin. And he did. He just certainly defeated them. Uh, the uh, Shishai, Amamai, Amen, and Telemiah, the children of Anak, he overcame them. Let me tell you something. He didn't beat just anybody. He defeated some giants. Some warrior giant, some trained warrior. What happened later on? David says, you know something? I don't pick a peep in history. And Caleb defeated giants. And here is one giant that stands before the people of God. He said he is insulting the people of God. That means he is insulting God. How could this uncircumcised 
a, 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 a man insult the, the, the God of this world. I mean, I'm sorry, the God of the whole universe. He said, I will defeat him. And, and, and the way Caleb did, Caleb, Caleb said, before I can get this mountain, I will defeat, defeat it. You know how he did it, minister? He simply put it this way. God told him that everybody going to die in that generation except Caleb and Joshua. Not only did he tell him that, he said that Moses told him, Caleb, whatever you walk on, the land you walk on will be yours. Man, how could I lose with the stuff that that been, been given to me? I'm going to walk on this land, and I'm not going to worry about opposition. I see opportunity. Come on, y'all. And he says, give me what's mine. I'm going to get it. Nobody going to get it in my way. And he defeated the enemy. 85 years old. Come on, y'all. 85 years old, yet he was able to fight. Amen? Caleb's passion breaks through so you can't miss it. He had a different spirit. This is the part. I got to close with that. Caleb is something about Caleb. The Bible says there was something about him. He had a different spirit. Amen, somebody? A spirit that followed God. He was a man that was faithful, a man that had so much faith that he was even able to see victory through the opposition. Amen, somebody? I think David was peeping at him also when he said he shall make your enemies your footstool and he'll prepare a table, in, a table for you in the presence of your enemy. And God, God will do that for David. He did it for Caleb. He did it for David and he'll do it for you. People of God, don't miss out on the fact that God is on your side. The truth is that if you are being molded into the image of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost is working in you. You are doing all you can to serve God. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to shine. You're going to shine like the sun. I am convinced that God never intended to invent old age. Come on, preacher. You want to argue with me? Start reading the Bible. Amen. <laughs> they live a long time in the Bible. Come on, Methuselah was, was what, almost 800, 900 years old? A long time in the Bible. God didn't intend to invent old age. Man invented old age. Come on, y'all. <laughs> this is what the writer says. Uh, but listen to this. We should not call it our last years. We should call it our harvest years. Lord, have mercy. That's some bad. That's a, come on, y'all. Y'all don't feel the power in that? Don't call it your last years, your golden years. Call it your harvest years. When God says, I think I got Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. That's it right there. A, a, a meekness and temperance against such there is no law. It ain't saying nothing about old age. It ain't saying nothing about giving up and retiring. Amen. I know I mentioned him a lot of time, but my late pastor used to say, you can retire from everything else, but you cannot retire from the work of God. There is still work to do. What Jesus says, the harvest is great. But the workers are lamest are few. So what are we retiring for? And we are convinced right now, truly it is, when we are eating that food in the restaurant, what they tell you, keep your fork, because the sweetest dish has yet to come. Hey, you're talking to the right person as much as I love sweet. Amen, somebody? I don't care if I get full on that dish, I still got room for dessert. Why should your life be any different? Follow God wholeheartedly and please, sir, make your life so. Do not call it your golden years. Do not call it your last years. Call it your harvest years. Live your life wide open. God has got opportunity for you to do, even amongst opposition. Bless the Lord in this place. Let the church say amen. Gracious master, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we touch somebody's heart. Thank you for using me to inspire somebody because I, I myself have been inspired. 
I love you this t today, this afternoon. We love you this afternoon. We pray, my Heavenly Father, you continue to bless our body and to increase us, my Heavenly Father. You know, I say something all the time, Lord. Forget me not in my old age, Lord. You will never forget us. You promise never to leave and never to forsake us, Lord. You promise that. So we should not be concerned that you left us in our old age. Help us, my Heavenly Father, to see, Lord, so we can enjoy our old age. And, and even when we sit, that we can come through this thing and shine, my Heavenly Father. You will bring us out of this, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm thinking right now of a young man that cannot do what I can do right now. And, Lord, we are praying that you touch his body right now and, and free him from his cage with that sickness, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless us now. Amen and amen. Thank you very kindly. Please, sir, please, ma'am, please, ma'am, remember the Lost Street Baptist Church. Come on down. Come on down on Sunday mornings, 815 Sunday school, 9 o'clock church service, and be blessed, and be blessed in the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Everywhere. Shout it everywhere.